thank you for joining us. Mm. And uh, advanced level four blending of medicinal herbs. Uh, we did. Well, we're introduced to the medicinal uh, properties of the herbs in uh, level two, in a, in in the basic format. And uh, so we know what the properties of the herbs are. And for us, it's very simple. What we have to do is transfer the knowledge that we have of the uh, oils and the flavor of the tea, as we mentioned before, is the essential oils. So in going internal, in our practice, we don't use essential oils to go internal. Uh, but we do use the essential oils as we take it out of the herb uh, with the water, with uh, well, hot water or hot steamy water, not boiling water. And uh, that's how we extract it. Uh, remember that we mentioned before there's uh, a few ways of extracting the therapeutic material from uh, plants. One is distillation, and that's the essential oils. Uh, in that system, we're able to extract X amount of the properties of the plant, and uh, it takes a lot of material to make one drop. It takes 20 pounds of the material in an average to make one drop of essential oil. So we use that. And, and then we have an extraction with uh, hot water and we're able to extract, which is in tea form, and we're able to extract the properties of same essential oils uh, into the water and in tea form so we can take it uh, internal. Example is lavender essential oils anti-inflammatory besides all the properties that it has. Then lavender flower tea, which is what I'm drinking right now, is anti-inflammatory also with the same properties. And then the third uh, way to extract the herbs that we use in our system is in tincture form. We take the herbs and we're able to take the blends that we're going to be blending of herbs and put it in a mason yard and that is uh, filled out with vodka and then we're able to extract much more of the therapeutic properties of the oils than we did in distillation or tea. So the tinctures are extremely strong. They also get to ferment over time. But for that, you need to view the uh, blending session on blending tinctures. Uh, at, at whenever you have a chance to do so. It all combines because when we're uh, offering an option for insomnia, uh, a synthetic medication, which has side effects that many really would like to avoid, uh, we get a lot of, of power, we get a lot of effects when we um, get into the oils and do a mixture with the oil or a synergy with the oil, when we do a blend with the herbs, and when we do a tincture and combine the three of them for that individual to consume uh, prior to bedtime or a few hours before bedtime. And we're able to replace medications as the side effects are no longer, um, well, they're too high. And, and, and the person has an option to, to choose the non-toxic approach, which is what we, uh, what we practice. Uh, very unique, because we're paying attention to science that is not being practiced in uh, medical consultation. So we do a really neat job in, in, um, in promoting health and promoting natural health. Once again, if you need a pill, you need a pill. But today, we're here to put herbs together, and what we're going to do today is go over the how to blend the ACAM, or now is the plant-based um, formulations that we have observed and used for the past 20 plus years. And we have the time frame. That's another uniqueness of our, of our uh, practice. We make sure we have time frame. Time frame meaning uh, when you if you have acid reflux and you drink what we call the acid reflux tea, within a half a cup to a cup, you should cancel the acid reflux. That's what has been reported, that's what we have seen. And that's a powerful and effective tea that people can uh, escape the pill on acid reflux. So that's one less pill they have to take. And at the same time, side effect of all these teas are anti inflammatory. Since now we know that all illnesses are inflammation then it makes sense, and we do that in our practice. 
uh, to replace anything that is inflammation from the water, from the product, from the medicine, from the foods, you know, from the air, with anti-inflammatories. And this is one big part. So let, let's begin. Uh, to make the, the blends that we have used for the years, we began with three herbs in equal parts. One of them is calendula. And I'm going to put them together here. Another one is lavender, two of them anti-inflammatory, and we're doing equal parts. And the other one is chamomile, chamomile germ. Very sweet with uh, validation, chamomile and lavender uh, has their insomnia validation. Uh, so it, it is scientifically validated uh, as an insomnia aid, and it's very powerful. So we have those three together. We begin with that. From there, we can do many teas by just adding different other herbs to this mixture. So make sure you have paper and pan ready. And uh, of course, this is a recording, so you can rewind. But it will do you good to, to write the formulations as we go. Uh, the formulations are also found in the text um, on level four, but uh, do get a get a paper in uh, pencil or pen and uh, begin to write the formulations because it's very simple to blend the herbs for a particular um, condition, and the simplicity begins with these three anti-inflammatory herbs. Now, this is the blend by itself that we have used and recommend to bring down the eye pressure. It has been reported. And when we do it for the eye, we make it in a tablespoon rather than a teaspoon. So it's a tablespoon and a cup of hot uh, water, not boiling water. Remember, we don't use boiling water with the herbs so we kill the properties. Just like if you're cooking vegetables, the more heat you add, the, the less properties you're going to have. So the same thing with the herbs. So it is steamy water, um, one tablespoon, we wait around 10 minutes until the water cools down, and then with cotton gauze, we soak them, or with a pipette, or with a dropper, we can take a drop and drop it directly in the eye. Um, it is anti-inflammatory, remember, all illnesses are inflammation problems, and it also soothes the eye. It's excellent for folks who have to work in fluorescent lighting all the time or in front of a, a computer. We recommend it on a weekly basis for those who are exposed to uh, the fluorescent lighting or computer lighting. Uh, to take the inflammation from the eyes, also uh, their antibacterials and their antiviral, lavender, as we learned on uh, level two. So at the same time, it works really good for minor eye infections. And you know, that's what we recommend, but, but the person, if they have an infection of the eye, they need to go to the doctor and get it diagnosed, but this will alleviate the problem as they get their appointment for the doctor and so forth. So, we begin with this three. Now, if I want to turn this combination into an acid reflux tea, remember we have here equal parts of lavender flower, calendula flower, chamomile flower, so now, for an acid reflux tea, we're going to add spearmint and peppermint. Now, we mix it together, we can use a wooden spoon, and a level teaspoon of that in a couple of hot steaming water. Uh, for the person that has acid reflux, to finish with a cup, they're going to begin to feel alleviation. And uh, it has been reported within a cup, it cancels the acid reflux. Now, if they do this regularly, many of them don't have to be on that medication, which is great. One less medication to take, one less group of side effects to face with. So uh, let's say that now we want to make a muscle relaxed tea. So with a muscle relaxed tea, we're going to take some sage dalmatian. Remember the 
synergies, the ACAM synergies, which we also cover in level four. And if you haven't seen that blending video, it's good to view. But in that synergy, uh, we mentioned that the muscle ache synergy has essential of sage and clary sage because they're muscle relaxers. And they have lavender because it's an anti-inflammatory. And that's exactly what we're going to add now to this three combination of anti-inflammatory. We're going to add the muscle relaxer. So we're going to put three quarters of sage and then equal parts of the rest of the herbs. So three quarters of sage and then equal parts of lavender, chamomile, calendula. Then we're going to add marjoram, which is a mild muscle relaxer. It's also good for relaxation. Remember marjoram essential oil. We use it for antidepressant. So marjoram is good for relaxation. So now we have we have added muscle relaxers to these three anti-inflammatories. Now we have a muscle relax tea. That will relax you. You don't have to drink the whole cup uh, before you realize you're uh, very nicely sedated. It's, it's very relaxing because of the muscle relaxer. Uh, it's also a strong anti-inflammatory, so we recommend that to be used at nighttime before bedtime. Because, as we mentioned before, inflammation moves in at nighttime. So it's good to drink water, and it's also good to drink tea in that water. So this is one of those that we recommend for muscle relaxers. Together with the product that we made with aloe vera in the muscle ache gel and in product making, um, that was level three. In the synergy we made in the ACAM synergy in level four, which is a muscle relaxer. So together with the application of this tea, and of course the removal of anything that is inflammation that causes um, inflammation and, and, and aches. So from the food and the products and so forth. So that is the muscle relaxed tea. Once again, three quarters of the sage, Dalmatian herb, and then equal parts of the ones that we have, that is a starting tea, the chamomile, the lavender, and calendula, and we're adding marjoram to that. That's the muscle ache tea. But now let's say that we want to make a sinus and cold tea. And kind of formulations that we have tried for years, once again, you realize that this formulation is not new to us. We did not copy it from somewhere. We actually created this uh, for the needs that we had in front of us. And we have seen it work, and we have that time frame. Uh, that is very important to talk about. So you know that this is not uh, one of those new formulations. This has been definitely people tested through the 28 years we have been uh, gathering information and practicing plant-based care. So the next one that we're going to do is going to be uh, for um, energy. We're going to do a tea with energy. Now that requires, remember the synergy for energy. It had rosemary. So we're going to put rosemary herb here. It has pep uh, peppermint. We're going to put it here. We're going to put spearmint, and we're also going to put basil. It's going to be equal parts of that. Now for the energy, we're not going to use this three anti-inflammatory herbs. So we're going to not use the lavender, and the northern eucalypt, I'm sorry, <coughs> the calendula, and um, the chamomile. So for the energy, the formulation is equal parts of rosemary, peppermint, basil, and spirit. And that is an excellent energy tea, which is also great for the stomach. Now, if we want to make this a sinus and cold, yes, we're going to now bring back those three um, herbs that we began with, which lavender, calendula, and chamomile, because of their uh, antibacterial, antiviral properties. So for in there, what we're going to add to that is rosemary also. We're going to add for its properties and its energy. And we're going to add eucalyptus leaf 
Once again, for the therapeutic properties that we cover in level two. And then we're going to bring oregano, antiviral. So we're going to put oregano, equal parts of oregano, uh, eucalyptus, rosemary, and then we're going to add vitamin C by adding rosehip. See, vitamin C is definitely not a white pill. Rosehip is red and is active. And we're able to put live vitamin C in our tea. And that's what we do with our sinus and cold tea. So let's review the sinus and cold tea. Equal parts of lavender, because of its antibacterial antiviral properties, that's the reason we're putting all that together. So equal parts of lavender, chamomile, and it's chamomile German, and uh, calendula, rosemary, eucalyptus leaf, oregano, we can also add marjoram, but we have oregano, which is which is good. It's your antiviral, um, and then a rose hip for vitamin C. We make the same way: a level teaspoon in a cup of half steaming water. Just the steam from that heat is able to alleviate somebody who's congested. So that one, in combination with uh, sinus and pulse energy and the essential oils. It's an excellent combination to take care of anybody's uh, discomfort from getting a cold, from getting a sinus problem. So that is the sinus and cold tea. Now, you also have other blends that you can make uh, for inflammation. Most all the herbs are anti-inflammatories, but you can also make tea from fresh herbs from the garden, which many folks don't realize that we're able to do that. So I brought some of them from uh, our garden, so we can talk about it a little bit. Uh, we have oregano, antiviral, so if I take a leaf of oregano, crunch it, and put it in a cup, and add hot water to it and wait five minutes, I'm going to have a wonderful antiviral tea. So I don't have to go to the dry herbs, I can actually go to my medicinal garden. We look at the herb garden as a cooking garden, and we forget that those are also our medicine. So the cooking garden also, and you know, you have your marjoram, your oregano, your garlic, your onions, all that is medicine. So we learn how to make fresh tea with, uh, with a herb garden. And it's, uh, it's a definitely different taste. It's a fresh taste. It's a wonderful taste. And what we have right here that I cut from the garden is uh, rosemary. And it all takes is just a dab of rosemary. And then we have marjoram. Remember marjoram? Which is also relaxing. So we can take a little clip of marjoram and put it in our cup. Uh, another one that is good to call your attention to, this is uh, guanabana leaves. If you Google guanabana, which is sour soap, you find uh, numerous uh, scientific validation that this is a hundred times more potent than chemotherapy. Uh, since we don't have a time frame in any of those uh, claims, and I like time flinch, you know, it's like, okay, when, how many of this tea do we need to drink before we can see a result? But that's okay. Uh, we still might want to add this in the tea because of the scientific data of this. So we're going to add a couple of, a couple of leaves of one avenue leaf to this, which is extremely antioxidant. Now we can leave it like this. But we can also put a little mint in it. And this is peppermint, which you can chew and get the same effect. And one of the things uh, that is good to do is to dry them or, or keep them fresh and uh, take them on a trip. And when you need a mint, all you have to do is take a leaf. And you chew on it. And you release the essential oils of peppermint 
which is much better than the synthetic that ones or the ones with the uh, ingredient list. So we're going to add a little mint to it. It's always good to add a little mint to the tea. It's good for the stomach. Now, of course, this one here is lemongrass. And we can add it to the tea, but we have, uh, we have a nice mixture here, and we have enough earth here to make a couple cups. Yeah, so I'm going to put the hot water here uh, in a few minutes. This is uh, lemongrass. Very easy to grow all these herbs. And this is excellent as a tea. We can put this in an energy tea. But we can also make a tea of this, a strong tea of this, put it in a spray bottle and spray as a mosquito repellent. That's right, you can make your own mosquito repellent with fresh herbs. And then if I really interested in making a mosquito repellent uh, with the first herb, I have herbs, I will definitely plant neem and citronella. And then I will combine the three herbs, lemongrass, neem, and citronella, pieces like you have seen me done, or make a larger amount, and uh, with hot steamy water. And voila, I have all the properties of repellent into the water. I put that water in a spray bottle, and I'm able to use it as a mosquito repellent. Done toxic. So that's a good thing to get involved with. Now, I also cut something that's very familiar to many of us, which is a piece of aloe from the garden. And, and most of us don't realize that we can make a tea from the aloe, which is excellent for our stomach. So for those who have a wheezy stomach or a stomach problem, uh, in the old days, uh, we used to cut this in half, my mother did, and she used to put it in a, in a jar of water, and that would be the water that she would drink. And that would soothe her stomach. Now there's a lot of um, validation of that, on this aloe, and much more for skin, um, as, a, as, a, as a healer of skin. So what we want to do, if you want to make a tea, you can uh, take a little slice and put it in a cup and put hot water and wait your 10 minutes and that will be your tea. Uh, or you can take the gel and do the same. So aloe is another one you can go ahead and, and, and throw in and make a tea. You can make a tea of anything that has a smell that has a flavor. Just make sure it's medicinal. And make sure you know when you make the tea because you're extracting the properties of that material into the cup to ingest. So that pretty much concludes our blend of, of different products uh, that we make in the blending of, uh, of our tea blends. Uh, there is, we cover the tea for as a reflux, we cover the tea for muscle aches, we cover the tea for inflammation, we cover the tea for energy, and there's a tea for cleansing that we used to do, uh, which brings in different herbs are known to cleanse uh, the, uh, different organs. But then we, we came across kombucha, which we cover in, in, uh, in this level, level four, in the advanced blending, how to make kombucha. And that's what we have seen that really detox the system which is one of the main things that uh, we need to do because as we mentioned before we're breathing we're feeding ourselves from the air of our environment so it's important to know what kind of chemicals are laced in that air that's feeding ourselves and uh, and to clean ourselves that's the moral of the story to detox so we cover the earth and uh, any questions, like always, give us a call and, or email. Remember, our office hours are Tuesdays, 10 a.m. to 7 p.m., and Thursday, 10 a.m. to 7 p.m. So, any questions for the course, give us a call. If you have, if you have gone all the way up to level four, we already have talked on the phone. This is the final level. This is where we learn to put it all together. So. Bring your questions. This is how we also get the feedback. This is how we also learn, so we can share it with you. Thanks again. We'll talk soon. We're going to continue uh, that.
to see what other blends and other products work and bring them to you as, as come available. Thanks again for joining us. Until next time, remember, with this team, this health. Thanks again. Peace to you.